boom and we're live hello guys how are we all doing just gonna share this around on the socials just give a few minutes for you guys to join in very late getting this one out i only decided i was going to go live tonight about two hours ago so apologies for the late notice Feel free to get some comments in, get any questions in that you may have um, as well. Make sure you give this uh, stream a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated and it helps to push this out to a broader audience. So let's see what we're doing here. Do. Boom. Sorted. Right. We should be all good. First of all, let me know if you can see me and hear me okay. I can see we have 40 of you in here. Like I said, before we get this thing underway, don't be shy. Give this live stream a big thumbs up. Hit that like button. It means more than what is happening right now? The old uh, webcam just decided to run away from me. Right. Okay, guys. How are we all doing? Yes, like I said, do me a massive favor. Hit the like button. Get those likes up. Let's see if we can hit 100 likes within the first 10 minutes. And then it means we're going to be in for a good live stream. Also, uh, feel free to leave some comments and questions that you may have. We are going to be doing a bit of a Q&A today. I haven't done a live stream for a good while. And I know as of late, we have uh, I, I've gained a good few subscribers. So it'd be good to kind of meet a few of you and, um, yeah, get to know you all a little bit better as well. So, yeah, don't be shy tonight, guys. Ask any questions you may have. I'm here to answer uh don't you know i'm not going to bite your hand off or anything so yeah feel free get some questions in uh, i look forward to seeing what you have to say um let's see how many likes we are on at the moment we are on 13 likes guys come on, we can do better than that there's 42 of you in here right now hit the like button don't be shy if you're on your phone you can do it if you're Watching on the TV now, you can even do it. So, yeah, don't be shy. Hit the like button. I am going to have to keep reminding you about that tonight. If you don't hit the like button, it's uh, it's very, very important for the YouTube algorithm for you to hit the like button. 19 of you have hit the like button. Thank you to you all. And now let's get to the comments. Let's see who we have in here exactly. Actually, while I scan through some of the comments, just give a quick hello and where you are watching from. I'll be interested to know where, you know, whereabouts in the world uh, you are watching this live stream from. First comment comes from David Dorado. Greetings from Spain. And he's already answered my question where he's watching from. Hello to you, David, in Spain, España. Bet the weather is slightly better there than it is right here, right now. Uh, Luke Pitt. Hey, mate, your videos are really helpful. Thank you for the content. No worries, Luke. Appreciate you watching. Are you a new viewer of the channel or, or have you been around for quite a while now? Like I said, I've gained quite a few subscribers recently. I think in the past month or so, I think I've gained about 2,000 subscribers. Uh, a couple of my um, last sort of few videos have done very, very well. And I think off the back of that, I've gained a good amount of subscribers. So, yeah, things are definitely... What are we doing here? Why does this webcam not want to sit still let's see if we can sort this out 
Go on, sit there. And that's as best as we're going to get, I think. Right, what was I saying? Yes, so I've gained quite a few subscribers recently. Um, I've, yeah, been, I think I've been pretty consistent with the uploads. And I think that's definitely helped. But yeah, my views have definitely been up. I think in the last 28 days or so, I think I've got like over 800,000 views, which is my best ever uh best ever month on youtube you know in the in in the entire sort of 15 years that i've been doing it so yeah channel is definitely growing it's definitely doing well right now and i don't plan on stopping because i'm on the road to a hundred thousand subscribers i said at the start of the year i wanted to hit hundred thousand subscribers this year that is still the goal so we're not stopping anytime soon we're just choo 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 you know taking the train all the way to the top right uh J J Singh says can modern diesel still experience dpf slash egr problems if driven short distances uh yes of course they can yes uh egr and dpfs they fail on you know even brand new diesels so and especially if they are only driven short distances. Richard says, done your planning permission yet for the garage? Uh, Richard, I'll, I'll be talking about that a little bit later on. So uh, park that question for the time being. Uh, Howden from Teesside. You're watching from Teesside. Um, that is in the northeast of England. Uh, JP, how's it going? Jim Tyra, how's it going? Uh, finger red number one. I think that's like an emoji or something. I can't see it on the uh, on the desktop version. Let's see how many likes we're on. One twenty eight likes. Come on, guys, let's get those likes up. Twenty nine now. I can see forty two of you in here. Don't be shy. Hit the thumbs up button. Help the YouTube algorithm out a little bit. So I can see a good few of you have uh, said where you're currently viewing from. Another quick question now for you guys, just to kind of get the chat going a little bit. How long have you been viewing the channel for? And what was the video that brought you to, that brought you to the channel? So how long have you been watching for? And can you remember the first video that you watched? I'll be very interested to know your answers on this. Um, uh, Jay, I'm pretty sure I've just kind of answered your question. Uh, thanks for loads, George. You've saved my car numerous times. I've only got five minutes tonight. No worries, Jim. I appreciate you chiming in. I know you've only got five minutes, but make sure you have hit that like button. Uh, it'd be greatly appreciated. Oh, wow. I think we have the first super sticker of the night, and it comes from Hank. Hank, what a legend. He sends 11 euros to the channel. Mate, that's greatly appreciated. I know you are a big supporter of the channel. So um, much, um, many, many thanks for that. Uh, you didn't have to do that. Uh, Jay said he's watching from Birmingham, UK. I know Birmingham very well. I bought my BMW 318D from there. Um, that was a load of fun, wasn't it? Um, hi, George from London. Hope you're well. Long time to boy. Yes, I know you've been a long time viewer of the channel. Yes, I'm doing very well. I don't know if many of you can tell, but I'm a little bit bunged up. Um, so I've I've been a little bit bunged up for the past couple of days. I, I don't know if it's maybe a um, you know off the back of doing that clutch job. Maybe that sort of taking it out of me a little bit um but yeah I, i'm doing okay i'm doing okay i'm sure we'll i'm sure we'll live uh i'm gonna guess that's a silent c so saba simon says hello from hungary oh cool uh, i may actually be going to hungary next year so that'll be uh, a new place to tick off my uh tick off my world map uh bournemouth beachfront oh nice richard I, i'm guessing the uh i'm guessing the beachfront doesn't look 
um, too clever right now, though, does it, with all the uh, wind and rain we're having? Martin's watching from sunny Manchester, Chawton, to be exact. Hey, George says, gentle. How, how's it going, man? Hope you're well. Uh, how do I like no button? There should be a like button. There should be a, like a little thumbs up button below the live stream, um, depending on obviously where you are watching it on. If you're watching it on the TV, if you're watching it on your phone, there should be a little thumbs up button somewhere. Uh, Ashley Leach. Hi, mate. You're a legend. Timing went on my three series with M47 engine and your videos let me turn it from a 2k at best salvage to a runner again which i part x for 4.5k towards my newer x3 oh wow that's interesting so when your time and chain went um yeah you said your time chain went did it cause much damage was it just a case of a few of the rocker arms being um broken or was was there valve damage or what Uh, Jonathan Parry, how's it going? Hey, George, Jonathan Parry from North Wales. Have very fond memories of North Wales. Went there a hell of a lot um, when I was a kid. Uh, greetings from Cyprus, and that is Tuna Akgonal. Probably butchered your name there, sorry. Uh, Luke Pitt started viewing around six months ago, but I'm currently doing a lot of work on my M47. Your videos have been a big help. Still have an injector leaking, same culprit. Have you changed the copper washers? I'm I'm going to assume you've already done that. But yeah, if you guys, if you have um, just joined in then I've basically asked for you to all leave in the comment section where, how long you've been watching the channel for, and if you can remember, what was the first video that you watched? Taj here from Reading in the UK. Uh, when are you gonna get into panel beating and bodywork, says Bandit? Uh, I don't know, to be honest, you know, doing like a specialist job such as you know body work um uh welding uh painting it takes a long time to get to a good level so i don't know i would love to do all that obviously it'd be you know a hell of a lot easier once i have the garage um but i don't know like I said, I, I don't really have any experience doing it. I'm not, I don't really, I don't really think it's something you can just start small on, you know, um, like when it comes to mechanical jobs, I think I just started by, you know, just changing the oil or changing an air filter and work my way up doing something like body work. It's not really something that's, you know, easy to, to start with. Uh, my E9320D uh, for uh, M47 boost pressure gauge on the phone gets to 1.6 bar. Would you say this is okay? I'd say this is linked to the map sensor on the manifold, right? Um, yes, it, it should be linked to your to your map sensor. Um, I, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know what the um, I don't know what the boost pressure is supposed to be. On the m47 it looks like we have another super sticker or super chat oh uh, jay what a legend he sends 4.99 to the channel jay much appreciate that man um that will go a long way to supporting the channel uh can cylinder deactivation technology cause reliability issues in the long term to be honest i don't know um obviously it's a relatively new technology uh, i mean i'm sure it's been around uh, to some degree for quite a few years now but it's only really the last sort of what five to ten years that is sort of became mainstream so you have like a lot of uh 
like V8s that will run on, say, only four or six cylinders on the motorway. Um, we don't know. You know, it's going to have to take years of, you know, numerous people coming out and saying they've, they've got a engine damage um, for, you know, no no apparent reason. And it'll probably come out that it's, um, you know, actually caused from this, you know, from the cylinders being shut down. I mean, uh, like if they're having proper lubrication, which I, I, I assume how it works is it basically just cuts the fuel to those cylinders. So they're still going to have lubrication. Um, I guess they probably won't have, you know, ignition. They, they probably won't have spark either. Um, so I guess really in theory, I don't see why they should have uh, any issues um but like i said we'll just have to sort of wait and see with that uh where did we get to uh, what's the typical journey length in miles or typical miles required per year to warrant purchasing a diesel over a petrol I mean, it's all really personal preference, but a good rule of thumb that, you know, typically people say is if you're doing less than 10,000 miles a year, then it doesn't really make sense to have a diesel. What you have to bear in mind is that diesels generally are more expensive to buy and they are they generally come with high maintenance costs. So, yeah, it's... Um, you know, if you're not doing high mileage with them, then it really doesn't make sense to to own a diesel. If uh, if we're talking ultra modern stuff, you know, anything from it's going to sound ridiculous, but anything from say like 2015 onwards, I don't think I'd buy a diesel to be honest. I think if I was buying something very new, I would think I'd just get a petrol, um, because modern petrols now they're just as efficient as diesels if you if you're talking sort of before 2005 to thought <coughs> excuse me before 2015 then yeah maybe get a diesel still but you know you've got to still have um high maintenance uh costs when it comes to them sorry i'm really quite bumped up aren't i i don't know if you can i don't know if it's coming across on the uh on the mic or not um would you electronically delete the egr and then decarbonize with hydrogeno um i'm not too sure what high uh, hydrogeno is um is it just like water um but yeah that that's essentially what i did so i did you know, I removed the EGR and then I cleaned out the intake ports and the intake manifold. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. But yes, I, I think I would recommend that. Just another confirmation of Hank that sent the super sticker. You're welcome, he says. Legend, mate. Appreciate it. I'd say first video I watched was you replacing the chains on the M47. Probably quite a popular one um, because I know like, millions of other people have done it now but i think i was like the first person on youtube not to sort of blow my own trumpet but i think i was the first person on youtube to actually show the the whole process of changing the um time and change on the m47 and um i think that the whole series has got like over a, a million views so yeah done um doing quite well the uh time and chain job on the m47 no like button says jim i don't know what's going on there mate to be honest there usually is a like button uh, let's see how many we are on at the moment we're on 44 likes apparently we have 39 of you in here so if any of you have not hit the like button don't be shy hit the like button and uh, let's see if we can get to 100 likes today that would be amazing Tajinda says, I've been watching for six months. First video was removing the intake manifold then on the M47. I've replaced my intake and turbo on my 2009 320D thanks to your videos. 
No worries, Tajinda. I'm glad to help. I've been watching you for about three months, watching all your E60 vids help me out a lot. Well, that's quite interesting because the E60, I had that like, I mean, I'm, I've, obviously it's my dad's car now, but I started on that and I think about four years ago. So I haven't really done a lot on it since. So it's interesting how you found those old videos only, if, only you know, like say three months ago. Uh, Bandit says, been watching since when you used to put copper grease on rusted brake pipes to change one advisor into another. You've come a long way since then. Yes, I think I have, uh, Bandit. Hi, I'm glad I finally got to watch you live. I have a BMW 750 Ally 2006. Nice. <coughs> Last year, E6520D video on intake manifold removal. Again, another popular video on my channel. Uh, Kenton is watching from Louisville, Kentucky in the US of A. Wow, we are going international for sure. Uh, can a similar... I think I've already read that, haven't I? I uh, started watching a couple of years ago after JM video on his 130i and you give... Ah, yes. That was... What would that have been? 2021 or 2022 or was it 2023 no it wasn't 23 it might have been 2022 but yeah that was a couple of years ago now uh watching for about a year want to look for uh what to look for on e46 m47 engines was first uh i just bought my e46 320d and i follow along with all your videos on that car as mine had every possible issue. Oh, wow. Sorry to hear. Uh, so it had some bad rattle for a few days, but pushed my luck. Uh, then slipped, I think, when I started the engine one morning. Broke six rock rounds, basically, them new timing kit, and all good. Yeah, to be honest, um, oh, a top chain guide had destroyed itself, was in bits, but the chain itself hadn't actually snapped, just stretched. Okay, that's. Um, that's, well, that's good to hear, I guess. But yeah, I've heard of numerous cases now where there's been like zero valve damage from a, a snap timer chain. I guess if you are, you know, let's say pushing on and it snaps at 4,000 RPM, then it may be a different story. But if it just snaps on idle or um, like say even the stretches, then you're probably not going to have too much damage. <coughs> Hi, I've watched your first video a year ago, and it's about the dynamic drive uh, leaking on BMW 60. It was really helpful. Yeah, oh, yes, again, another quite a popular video on my channel. Appreciate you watching, Toma. Or Toma. Uh, yes, mate, change the seals, bought new ones again now, just in case I've blown again. Basically, took my injectors to get cleaned as the EGR had failed because a lot of soot and the garage gave me. So why, I don't understand, sorry, I don't understand why you took your injectors to get cleaned. Because of the EGR. Uh, oh, the garage gave you the wrong injector, now the replacement keeps bubbling. Yeah, maybe the wrong injector. <coughs> um... Where do you get transmission parts from? Um, to be honest, like it, I use a you know I use loads of different um, supplies when it comes to any parts in general. Basically, what I do, you know, for BMW is very very simple. So I just use a um, website called realoem.com. That's real r e a l o e m dot com and you put in your details you know you put in your mate uh, obviously it's bmw so you put in your model and year and all that good stuff and um then you will be able to find all of the part numbers on your car you know from grommets to bolts to nuts to clutches to anything honestly to pistons to 
you know, literally anything. You're about to find every single part number for your car on there. And then all I do is take that part number and search the internet for it. Generally, you will find some cross references somewhere. And um, that's basically how I find like parts at the most competitive prices, really. Um, where do I go? Ah, evening. Yes, we all need a garage. Been working on the E30 and the Fiesta on the drive or in or in a gazebo. Getting a bit tired of working in the elements. Yes, as am I. And I cannot wait for the garage. Uh, loving the E12 stuff. Uh, and Gentle's Garage vids. Yes, um, Gentle's Garage um, is probably the only other person that I know is actually doing an E12 on YouTube. So if you love E12 stuff, check out Gentle's Garage or, I guess, check out my videos. Uh, flipping cars and repairs is laughing at something. Uh, I've installed ISTA to code the new injectors this week, getting a P0203 code. Now I'm going to replace the wiring harness as it was saturated in diesel. That's the plan. Sorry for spam. Hey, that rhymes. Did you miss the news? No, you didn't miss the news, but I am going to be, I'm just going to try and fly through these comments and then I will uh, discuss the news. The news. And tonight's news at 8.30, George Osters tells us all. Right, uh, no. <laughs> um, how about mild uh, hybrid technology? Um, how about it, hey? Um, yeah, I've, I'm, I wouldn't mind a hybrid, if I'm being honest. I mean, I'm sure they'll be more complicated and more fail failure points and so on. But if it means not having an EV, I would definitely have a hybrid. Um, 137,000. I'm not sure what that is. Ah, uh, that's in relation to your again, what's around cold start up with rough idle glow post and modern reach chain. Uh, could it be the injectors? Could be the injectors. Say if one of them start, uh, say if one of them is leaking. Um, have a E83 two litre diesel M47 extra 2008 must change pneumatic EGR valve. Is it enough to clear adaption with impair? Um, and it relearn the limits by itself or any special thing needed? Um, no, you don't need a special tool after you've cleaned the um, oh, after you've changed the valve. Yeah, they don't need coding or anything like that, so don't worry about it. Is it true that diesel engines last longer than petrol or will properly maintain petrol engine ju last just as long? Um, I mean, as a very blanket statement, um, diesel engines should last longer than petrol. You know, they should be able to do higher mileage because, well, for a number of reasons, really. Um, obviously, diesel engines by nature, they, you know, they, they rev lower than um the rev lower than petrol engines so he's going to have less wear in general and of course um diesel engines are pretty much self-lubricating because well diesel is an oil so yeah they are much um better lubricated um with that being said though i think when it comes to the more modern stuff i think the thing that will really hurt diesels is all of the emission control stuff i mean you take a diesel from the 1990s and that will do half a million miles no problem but then you take a modern diesel and it probably will struggle to do half of that so you know we're kind of going the opposite way now uh diesels are pointless nowadays the diesel fuel is expensive compared to how it used to be You say that, but only really in the UK. I was in France um, 
like a week ago and um diesel's actually cheaper than petrol there so and i think in new zealand as well i think it's the case that diesel is cheaper than petrol it's a bit weird but it's how it is just found that the previous owner me 46 removed the reef rails and not plugged the holes uh, i've plugged them up cleared the h2o from boot and battery box any advice regarding drying it dehumidifier probably your best bet i don't know 57 engines but valve stem seals possibly a cause many others too though um hi george is nige from neath slash port talbot been watching the channel for a few months egr delete very interesting uh 15 years ago diesel was good i agree uh yeah there is i think we have a few different conversations uh cool racing good question any progress on the e12 engine i should have a video out for you on the e12 this week if all goes well <coughs> so do stay tuned for that for those of you who don't know what the e12 is it's the bmw 1979 e12 520 that was in a barn for 30 years and i rescued it um your 760 having the orc still waiting for the video uh yes it's still on my list of things to do although i do need to get a hold of the wiring that goes from the orcs port to the back of the ask unit i do need to get a hold of that um been watching you for a few months now found the channel through looking at the v12 videos very good detail and helped a lot glad to hear it uh love the project kfc videos george uh, good stuff um okay i'm just going to take a quick pause on the comments while i share with you some news and it's some news that quite a few of you will be glad to hear i am just going to stall you all for a couple of minutes though just while i try and get even more of you in here because i know what will happen people will join after i reveal the news and then people will say oh what was the news i've missed it so if you haven't already done so hit the like button i will reveal the news once we get to 65 likes so seven more likes we're not far away I can see there's 34 of you in here i'm guessing there's a good seven of you at least that haven't hit the like button hello from slovenia first video was about silver e46 touring non-runner never missed a video ever since like your home fix vibe with basic tools i appreciate you watching davor from slovenia I'd love to see you go further with the ZF Auto Box, maybe a zip kit. What is a zip kit? Splendid, but keep an eye out for the E12. I saw another video on an early version of injection. I didn't realize they did carbs on the M20 engines seem to have had a lot of variations yes they did for for a few years they did and it's kind of one of the reasons that i bought that car because i want i really wanted a carb engine um to work on because you know it's it's all new um information to me never worked on a carb engine at all so that was really my goal for you know when finding a classic to work on 
Right, I can see we have 65 likes. We're actually on 67 now. If you haven't already done so, hit the like button. I'm going to share with you the news right now. So, a few of you have asked about the garage build. You know, how, how's it going and, and things like that. I do have some good news to share with you. Well, I'm not going to say good news, but I have some news. Um, you could say it's good news, the fact that we are moving things along. But I have officially applied for planning permission on the dream car garage so yeah there's that i guess now we just have to wait and see what happens you know they say six to eight weeks for planning permission if all goes well of course if it is denied and then you have to go to appeals then you know we could be talking years but yeah, let's hope everything goes well. I think it should. I don't I can't think of any reasons why I shouldn't be granted planning permission. I mean, for those that have watched the videos, let me know if you can think of any reasons why you think planning permission shouldn't be accepted on the garage build. So for those that don't know, it's just a basically a triple wide um basically gonna be a triple wide timber garage uh slash carport slash carriage house um so it's going to be basically a double wide garage and then a single carport slash carriage house on the side it's basically going to be the whole entire width of my garden and um yeah i'm going to be having hopefully a, a gravel driveway leading to it and it's at the bottom of my garden and I can't see any reasons why it should be denied. Like I said, interested to know your thoughts. If you have any reasons, you know, why you think it may be denied. And um, for those that are probably wondering why it's taken me so long to get to this point, um, obviously I've had to have drawings of the garage um, drawn up. And I've had to have a location plan and a site plan and all that drawn up. And I've had to actually put the, um application in itself so yeah that, i'm glad that's now done and we can just wait and see what happens i guess um i will i think probably what i'll do in the next part of the dream car garage build i think i will i mean for those that you know are not watching this live stream i'll obviously let let you all know that i've put in for plan of permission but i think i'll probably go over in detail the plans of the garage all the you know the plans that i have submitted i'll let you know dimensions uh what my plan is what my plan is for the space you know what my plan is for the driveway and things like that and then um i'll update you on the things a few things that i've been doing in the background as well that i haven't filmed um but i'll let you know sort of what's going on i've been doing some uh, land drains so i did mention i think in the previous part i was going to be putting the land drain around the perimeter of my garden that's done and um today actually i've been doing some land drains throughout the lawn um I, which i think is definitely needed because we've had so much rain this year and i think i am going to be renovating the lawn again i think i'm going to be raising the level of it and i thought it's only you know it's only right that i put some land drainage in place to prevent it from being waterlogged in the future so yeah lots and lots and lots and lots and lots to do um but i'll try and keep you updated with it all uh nice good luck george appreciate that cook racing good luck thank you i think i'm gonna need it fantastic congratulations mate uh, well, not congratulations yet. We don't know the outcome. Uh, when you get the garage done, get an E30 in there. Love the E30s. Uh, you know what? I'd love to do an E30 myself. Um, getting expensive now. Got one for 800 quid in 2011. Now it's probably... Yeah, they are, to be honest. They go by percentage of your garden for a garage is that i mean if i had to say um 
the garage is probably going to be taking up about maybe i don't know 20 percent maybe maybe less than that i don't know but i would say around 20 percent of the garden the garage is going to be taken up rain has been a pain in the yes it definitely has uh yeah the rare they're they're rare thing to find still got mine being off the road for 20 years still 99 percent oem metal that is very very rare not to find any welding doing you know being done on a, an e30 um <clears throat> Any suggestion on how to deal with snap glow plugs? I snap one on my E9320D is drilling the only option. To Jinda, I will have a video soon. I will probably because I've ordered the kit to remove the um to remove the uh broken glow plugs. If you don't know, I basically snap one of my glow plugs. Um and I've yeah, like I said, I've ordered the kit to remove them so. I will be making a video how to remove snap to glow plugs probably next week. Uh, hello, George. I'm 19 and have a 2012 318D Sport Plus. Wow. How did you get insured on that at just 19? Uh, your videos have helped me immensely. Uh, and you having one of, and you having one is one of the main reasons for me keeping mine. Glad to hear that um can i put a 530d injector in a 525d i believe so but it will need coding uh viewing from I I istanbul turkey your videos on e90s brought me to your channel <coughs> uh snap to global took the head off anyway and in the end got a new head you got a new head because you snapped a globe plug. Well, I'm hoping I definitely don't need a new head because I'm going to try and remove the glow plug that I snapped. Uh, long time to see. Hope, uh, how are you? Hope all is well. What have you been up to then? Um, I, well, hopefully I've just sort of explained what I've been up to. I, I'm kind of going back on myself with the comments here. But yeah, good to see you too, John. Uh, hi George, loving the Project KFC videos as I have a 2012 um, a 318D. I'm planning on cleaning into it, manifold too. So worth changing the seals. Are these generally okay to refit? Um, to be honest, like you should. It is good practice too, but you can get away with reusing them. Um, I'll probably have that off, you know, numerous times in the future. So if I want to fit new seals. Then I can, but if you if you just basically plan on um, removing it once and that's like you done, then yeah, I'd probably change the seals. Um, where do you recommend buying used cars to prevent? <laughs> uh, you come on, you should all know that I'm the not I'm not the best person to ask where you should be buying cars from. Let's be honest, you know I bought a car from Birmingham off Facebook marketplace and I got scammed. So, I mean, I don't think I can be giving anyone advice where to buy cars from. Um, I mean, in all honesty, like if you can, it depends, like it depends what situation you're in. If you can, you know, if you don't mind working on your own cars, then you can definitely take a risk from somewhere like Facebook Marketplace. If we're talking about like the like the cheapest place to buy cars from, it's probably Facebook Marketplace. <coughs> but there's always going to be hidden things that you're not aware of. Um, failing that, I'd probably say buying from a private seller on, say, like something like Auto Trader. Probably your next best bet. 
Uh, I'm looking to upgrade to B58 530D from a 118D. Thoughts? Uh, I'm guessing it'll be to an F10. In which case, yeah, I mean, they're like, they're good, comfortable cars. They're great cruisers. You know, you can't beat a five series. Um, but you are probably going to be looking at a little bit more money to maintain that. So it depends sort of what financial situation you're in. Um, where are we? Where are we? Got to run. Nice chatting with you all. We'll look out for the engine vid. No worries, Cook. Glad to have you here. Uh, got to run. Thanks for the interactions, mate. Good luck with the plan. If I don't catch the next one, um, you too, Luke. Well, not good luck with the planning, but yeah, glad to have you here. Uh, cool, I'll look out for that. I bought the kit already too. <coughs> Glow plug vid, great time. And haven't tried taking my plugs out yet. Would be good to be pre armed with the knowledge should it go wrong. Mine has been on the side of a driveway for 10 years, been rebuilt, put on the road for nine months, now been in a barn till now. Uh, are you talking about your E30? Right. Diesel Point UK, they removed glow plugs from a Merc using a slide hammer with a mod. Yeah, I don't I don't know how you how you remove glow plugs because it's something that's threaded, right? How do you remove it with a slide hammer? Uh Rather burning oil and sweat could be your crankcase breather, could be your um, rock cover leaking down onto your exhaust. Could be quite a few things. Uh, what about Gumtree for a cheap car range? Four hundred pounds. Yeah, again, Gumtree is a, a cheap place to buy cars from, but again, it's hit and miss. You never know what you're going to get. So, you know, just expect the worst, I guess, if you're buying a car from any of these places that I've mentioned, Facebook Marketplace, Gumtree, you know, just expect the worst. Uh, thanks for all your videos, man. No worries. Glad you have been enjoying them. Uh, I've already read that one. Uh, Gentle says, uh, good luck with the uh, planning permission, George. Appreciate that, mate. <clears throat> Got a need look, I think. I don't, to be honest, I don't know what I'm actually worried about. Um, like I said, I don't, I can't think of any reasons why I shouldn't be granted it, but it's just one of them things. I don't know if it's some of the comments that I was getting in some of the earlier videos where people were like, oh, you're never going to get planning permission for that. You are you know, oh, this and that. And so... I don't like I said, I don't know if I'm letting that get to me um, a bit too much or what, but yeah, I'm sure I'll be fine. Um, you tap what's left. Uh, are you going to tap? Oh, yes. Wait, what do you mean? If you've got a glow plug stuck into your, to the head, you, ha you can't just run a tap in there surely it'll just well that, that will just fall down into the cylinder won't it uh you're going to tap into the f30 market someday yes definitely uh f30 is slowly becoming what the e90 was and it's like probably one of the most popular bmws especially here in the uk so yeah, I'll definitely look at doing an F30 at some point. I need to actually find a car to, you know, be the next car in the trading up series. Uh, I've kind of been holding off, though, because I don't know whether to. And here's actually a good um, question for you guys as well. Um, I've been holding off buying another car for the trading up series because I don't know what to do with my other cars. E12 is kind of an, you know, 
under construction, shall we say. I want to get that running and driving on the road. The 7 Series, still, that's been put to the back of my mind. That's, you know, still just needs a few cosmetic bits. Um, the 1 Series, that's running pretty sweet. I don't drive that car a whole lot now. Um, obviously, Project KFC, that is my daily driver. And then the Mini Cooper S, that is basically a family member's now. Just a couple of bits left to finish on that. Um, but what do you think I should do with the 130i and with the 760 Ally? Do I sell them or do I, you know, maybe do a competition where, you know, um, potentially one of you can win it. Obviously, I'd done that pr previously. Well, I've done it twice now. Uh, I've done it. I've done it on the old E60 525D. All of the uh, places sold out on that, and it went quite well. Now, I've done it on the 760, and we didn't sell all of the places, but the winner still won a thousand pounds. So, still all good. But um, obviously, if I was to do something like that again, I'd want to make sure that. The car actually goes to someone um because they're basically surplus to requirements now i don't really need them i don't have time to well at the end of the day you can only drive one car can't you so it doesn't really make sense me have you know it doesn't really make sense me having four or five cars just sitting around so yeah and not only that we need fresh stuff for the channel so yeah what are we thinking 130i do we sell it do we potentially raffle it and the v12 760 again do we sell it or potentially raffle it let me know your thoughts in the live chat right now um the only thing i can see you not getting planning permission is your neighbors um well in that case i can't see any problems because i've spoke to both sets of the neighbors and Ne they haven't you know i, I basically said that i'm going to be building a garage um at the back of the garden do you have any problems said no no problems do what you like basically so <clears throat> yeah i can't see that being an issue if i'm honest the thing i was worried about was the size of the garage you know it's going to be a fair old size we're going to be talking about roughly about 80 square meters i think and then the height as well i think we're talking a, between four and a half to five meters to the ridge um so yeah that's those are the two things that i wasn't sort of sure about <clears throat> um M Star, no worries. Says so gotta go. We'll be viewing later. No worries, my man. Uh, being offered a FIP under sixty one plate with engine light on and power steering pod not working. Hmm. Uh, the zip kit has upgraded parts for the ZF boxes, replaces standard plastic bits from metal replacement. Once you do it, you realise why the, these boxes fail and why you need to keep doing oil and filter interesting i mean i wouldn't i would never say that you know upgraded parts are a replacement for changing the fluid on a uh, an auto transmission oh well i i sorry jay i completely missed your uh, super sticker legend i appreciate that is that your second one you've sent tonight as well did you send one earlier Yes, you have. Legend. Appreciate that, mate. Uh, by the way, any super chats, super stickers, uh, donations to the channel, it's all massively appreciated. It literally just goes back into, you know, funding the channel, helps to buy, you know, better camera equipment, tools, um, goes to funding, you know, future projects and all that. So, yeah, massive, massive, massive uh, thanks to you, Jay. <clears throat> Uh, but in general, which is more reliable slash so cheaper to maintain, BMW 320i or Mercedes C-Class 2-litre diesel, Volkswagen Golf? 
to be honest, I don't know a lot about Mercs and Volkswagen or Audis. Um, what I would say, though, is I probably wouldn't get a... I probably wouldn't get a 320i, if I'm being completely honest. Hmm, it's hard to say. And the, the fact that they're all so new, it's it's kind of difficult to say which is going to be the most reliable. It's only sort of after, you know, 5, 10, 15 years of a, a, a specific model being out that you you know learn how reliable the car is if it's a pretty brand new car then you don't really know of any uh common failure points i guess uh intermittent leak on m47 320 dm sport cured by fit new seals and genuine gasket um interesting uh, can the glow plugs on an E90 320D fall into the engine? I thought the glow plugs sat into the cylinder head and couldn't fall down. I mean, no, they can't just they can't just fall into the engine. V12, drive it, says T. See, I, I could drive it. I did daily drive it for a good few months. Um, I think like six months. I literally daily drived it. Um, it's actually very good on fuel. Um, you know, all things considered, I mean, it's a six litre V12, so it's not going to be amazing on fuel, like compare it to diesel, but like on the motorway, you get 30 mpg, um, which is very impressive, I think. <clears throat> well, that's not too far away from what I get in my 130i. Um, but yeah, I've done everything I wanted to do with it. I've, you know, took it to Germany, drove it on the Autobahn, drove it um, on the Nürburgring. You know, I've done all the maintenance that I wanted to do to it. So I don't really think there's a hell of a lot I can do to it now. Uh, are you interested in doing things like tuning, slight remap, etc.? Yes, definitely. And I do actually plan on getting the 318D tuned um, at some point this month, hopefully. So, yeah, for sure. I mean, all pretty much all my diesels that I've ever owned have they've all been tuned so it's something that i do recommend uh just dropped in sorry i'm late what is the big news hope you're well mate Call course randy hope you are well as always uh the big news basically i've uh submitted i've submitted planning permission for the dream car garage we've also discussed quite a bit quite a few other things tonight as well but that's basically the big news if you haven't already done so to the 29 of you in here now uh do us a massive favor and hit the thumbs up button it'd be greatly appreciated uh, if you did sell the 760 what are you asking for it john are you asking to buy the 760 um if i'm being completely honest i would like to get the money back that i have into it now hear me out i know that it's generally not you know, it's generally not a an expected thing to be able to get what you've spent on a car back out of it. But bear in mind that some of the jobs that I've done to the 760 would have cost thousands, you know, in labor at a garage. I mean, let's just, you know, let's just talk about the um, alternator brackets, gaskets yeah the gaskets themselves i think they were like 20 pounds but if you was to get that done in a garage you know you're probably talking best part of a thousand pounds i would have thought because it's you know it's pretty much a full day job um and obviously at the same time rebuilt the alternator like i've done so much i mean it's all on my channel of course i've done so much work to that engine 12 new spark plugs 12 new ignition coils all new drive belts, um, all new tensioners, idler pulleys, um, all new cooling systems, a new fan, new fan clutch, uh, new water pump. I've done the um, uh, valley pan uh, transfer pipe stent, done that fix. Um, 
yeah the, the list just goes on and on and on what i've done to that car um and what i have into it is between 10 and fifteen thousand pounds so like i said i'm not sure yet i'm not sure how much i would sell it for uh, i guess at this point i am open to offers um it still does need a few cosmetic jobs which i plan on doing um but yeah uh, at this point john to answer your question i'm open to offers uh what do you think about the b47 mine feels very slow in a 520d poor mpg as well uh zane the b47 is basically the same engine as the n47 so there was only a few slight changes um obviously they increased the horsepower by i think what like what was it like six horsepower on the 20d version um but the the bare engine is pretty much identical <clears throat> If you're getting poor uh, power and MPG, you may have a, a bigger problem. Good question, Jay. In general, are larger engine cars more reliable? Comparing a 1.5 litre, 150 horsepower model compared to a 2 litre, 245 horsepower model. Here's what I have noticed. Well, for starters, you kind of need to, I mean, there's a few different ways you can look at this, but generally anything that is forced induction, so if it's turbocharged or if it is, you know, supercharged or combination of the two, then it's going to be less reliable than the equivalent naturally aspirated version. It just is. Everybody knows this. You know, if you slap a turbo on an engine, but more power through it is going to receive more stress and um yeah it's not going to last as long as if it was naturally aspirated with that being said you know you're not really going to get a naturally aspirated diesel are you unless you go back to what 1980s um but no like I'm guessing you're talking about petrols here so 150 horsepower from 1.5 um, or you're talking 245 horsepower from a two liter engine. So look at which engine is putting out more power per the displacement. So um, so the 1.5 liter engine is putting out 10 horsepower per 100 cc, whereas the two liter engine is putting out roughly uh what 12 12 uh yeah roughly 12 horsepower per um 100 cc so i mean based on that like i would probably say the 1.5 liter engine is probably more reliable but like you know i'm just talking hypothetical here there's obviously a bunch of different variables you know there could be common failure points on the 1.5 liter engine um you know there's a there's loads of different things it could be different turbo size it could be loads of different uh various but variables but generally like the least stressed engine is going to be more reliable i mean you take you like have a look at say a ford one liter eco boost engine you know that's a one litre turbocharged engine and they come up to variants of like 140 horsepower 140 horsepower right from a one litre engine 
you know, to me, that just screams like that's got, that's not going to be reliable. That's not going to do 500,000 miles. Whereas if you have a naturally aspirated one liter engine, yeah, it's probably only going to be 100 horsepower or sorry, not 100 horsepower. It's probably only going to be like 60 horsepower or 59 horsepower as my first car was that one liter Corsa, 59 horsepower. Um, but yeah, like that, that will probably do, you know, double, triple, quadruple the miles, like higher powered engines in general, they're not going to, um, last as long. Now you look at my, <coughs> my, uh, six liter V12, 760 LI. Yes. You know, it's 440 horsepower or whatever it is, but it's a six liter engine. And that's why that engine will easily do 300,000 miles because it's not a stressed engine. You know, it's comfortable, you know, just ticking along at 1500 RPM. That's probably why it's so good on fuel as well. It's like very talky low down, doesn't need to rev high. Um, and yeah, it's like a, not a stressed engine. It, it's naturally aspirated. So in general, it's always going to last longer. So you know look at which engine in general is not stressed the most um and then yeah try and make a decision from that really i know it's like it's not the answer that you wanted but like i'm just you know talking with assumptions here i feel like car manufacturers today they don't really care about reliability they don't really care about how long an engine's going to last they just want an engine that's going to be you know you know an engine that's going to have a lot of power and an engine that's going to be efficient so that's where you get the small uh turbocharged petrol engines from you know they're good on power and they're good on fuel but they're not going to last very long so you know it's kind of the downside to to things <clears throat> um <clears throat> have you done a video about the ist set <coughs> excuse me have you done a video about the ist set up I remember I haven't scrolled down far enough when I've searched. Um, I've done a good few videos about ISTA. Uh, maybe not setting it up, no. Uh, to be honest, I would say when you purchase ISTA, just you know, go through the um, go through the setup instructions that comes with it. Um I'm just trying to make sure I haven't missed any comments. Quarter only said, good luck with the planning. Hope it goes well. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, hi, George. Good luck with your permit. Jasmine from Malta. Uh, both are petrol. Um, looking for an F80 M3 at the moment. What's the price range in the UK? Uh no idea honestly jesmond i haven't even looked that's way too new um for me oh matt sb what a legend he sends 199 to the channel sub to george everyone says matt i agree this man is very wise he has very wise comments appreciate that appreciate that though uh, matt greatly uh, appreciated um right get your last few comments in we have been going for like an hour and 10 minutes now so let's see if we can end on 100 likes as well hit the like button if you haven't already done so let's see if we can end on 100 likes get your last few comments in because i'm going to be wrapping this up in the next five minutes let me know what you think about the news that the dream car garage is well, we've applied for planning permission, so we'll see how things go. Uh, let me know what you think about that. Let me know if you think we're going to get accepted. Let me know if you think we're going to get denied. I'm interested to know your thoughts on all of this. Right. While 
you leave some last few while well, you leave the last few comments i'm just going to check over a couple of things Okay. Well, 89 likes. Come on, guys. 11 likes away. Hit the thumbs up button. Don't be shy. Do it. You're missing out. Um, okay. Uh, DZK. Hi, George. Greetings from Bosnia. I learned a lot from you and do most of the work by myself on my E90 330XD. Uh, I, honestly, I would hate to work on a, an X Drive E90. It's bad enough working on an X5. Um, if I drill the threads on my snap glow plug, will the glow plug fall into the engine? um i don't know it's hard to say i will have to see how i get on when it comes to the when it comes to the removal of my snap glow plug uh hank oh glad to see you're still around i can't wait to see it finish and do your first repair yes honestly that will be a monumental uh moment in time um i cannot wait for that I, I, honestly, I could not wait to, I could not wait for the ground to just dry out so I can just get cracking with things out there, you know, moving all of the, um, all of the concrete and, uh, you know, really laying out the foundations for everything. Um, does all wheel drive cars, such as X drive, require all four tires to be changed if one goes out to prevent damage to travel? See, I have heard this, but, it seems absolutely ridiculous right you'd have to change all four tires just because one of them you know just because one of them needs replacing it seems a bit ridiculous uh where in the uk do you live i live in the midlands yes whatsoever which is kind of in the middle um M47 question for you. E82, can you pull out the engine without affecting the AC lines or do you need to crack the lines at compressor at any stage? Um, yes, you can remove it without without having to uh, undo any of the AC lines. Watch my video on N47 engine removal. I removed the engine without even having to disconnect the AC. Uh, have you used any companies that clean injectors successfully? Um, I haven't, to be honest. I haven't ever needed them doing. Uh, right, I think that is going to finish things up nicely. <clears throat> uh, we are eight likes away, guys. Come on. Can we end on 100 likes? Eight likes away. Don't be shy now. Whereabouts in the Midlands? Coventry. See, look, Hank gets it. He's hit the like button. 92, 94 likes, guys. We're six likes away from it and 100 likes. Then we can sign off and I can leave you all to rest. Art H says, are you going to the BMW Festival at the end of April in the National Motor Museum? You know what? That's a good question. Like, I really need to start going to car shows and things like that. You know, partly to meet, you know, some of you guys, but partly to, you know, see what I've been missing out on. I haven't really done any, like, car shows or anything. So, I mean, end of April, this little bit short notice. I do have a very stacked out month, you could say. Um, but 
I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure about that one. Uh, but I will look in. I will look into it a little bit. Um, but yeah, for sure, I need to try and get to more car shows and things. And I still need to do some sort of meet up with all of you guys as well. Whether or not we go on a a nice long drive, where whether or not you know we just have a meet up and and talk all things cars or all things BMWs. I don't know, but. There's still so many things that I need to do, and um, I want to try and get all of you guys involved in something. Um, but we'll see how things go. Uh, how many likes are on now? We're on 96, guys. Four likes away. Don't be shy. Hit the thumbs up button. Um, cool. Home of the Comptry Transport Museum. Very true. Uh, <clears throat> Is the X5 E93 a good buy? Um, X5 E93. What? I don't know. How can you get an X5 E93? Uh, best of luck with everything now. You shouldn't have any issues with plan admission if neighbors are chill. Look forward to seeing it in the future. Um, yes, let's hope so. Um, is the M57 engine the best diesel engine ever made? Um, probably best BMW diesel engine. I don't think too many people can dispute that. Uh, you're not too far. <clears throat> you're not too far from folks, uh, cafe garage could arrange a BMW meet there. Potentially. Uh, the Jersey International Motor Motoring Festival is on from 30th of May till the 2nd of June. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, oh, it's Jilk's uh, Garage Cafe. Should organize a BMW meet there. Let me just have a quick look where that is. I don't know if I've heard, heard of that. Oh, that's in Banbury. That's like South Warwickshire, isn't it? Isn't it a biking, uh, like a biker calf there? I mean, I, yeah, why not? Oh, I was in Kyneton. I'm guessing that's the same place. But yeah. I don't see why not. We need to get something sorted desperately. Guys, four likes away from the 100. Don't be shy if you haven't already uh, hit the like button. Yes, and cafe, caffeine and machine. Yes, I still need to, like, I literally haven't been there and it's not even that far from me. Still need to go. Uh, I might be wrong with the E93 bit. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to say, um, like, for the E93, what? Maybe you're talking about the E. What is the X5? Is it E? Not E84, is it? E70, of course. Yeah, would I recommend it? I would I recommend an E70 X5? Um, Probably not, <laughs> to be honest. Like I've worked them on it, it's an absolute nightmare. So on that, sorry, I'm out. Um, it yeah, it's the E70, the X5 is. Um, yeah, like I said, I probably wouldn't based on you know having had to work on one. Um, later all, have a good one, and I think on that note, Hank, I am going to be signing off as well. Guys, you've all been legends. Thank you all so much for you participating in today's live stream. And a special mention, oh, <laughs> excuse me, a special mention to Hank, Jay, Jay again, and of course, Matt SB for sending the super uh, super stickers and super chats tonight. Greatly appreciated, guys. Um, if you do want to support the channel, there's a number of ways you can do so. 
you can become a member you can also join the patreon links to all should be down in the description box below i want to thank you all for watching have a great evening and i guess i will see you in the next video which should be coming at some point this week see you later guys and on to the next one